guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we have a very brightly colored tutorial and a first impression on the Anastasia Beverly Hills Prism Palette. I'm not going to say anything about my thoughts on the palette because you'll just have to wait and see in the video what I think as I use it, obviously. This is the look we'll be creating today. It's a little graphic, it's a little bright, it's a little fun. It is what it is and we're going to do it. I'm also wearing one of my current absolute favorite liquid lipsticks right now. Mm. Ooh, mm, mm, it's so good. But before we dive into this tutorial, have you subscribed to my channel yet? Because if you have not, um, go ahead, take one second. It takes just one second. Click that subscribe button down below. Because hello, I mean, look how much fun we're gonna have. Look how much fun these eyeballs are. Do it. It's it's for, this is for you, not for me. Okay, all jokes aside, please don't forget to subscribe. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, and let's jump in, see what I think of the Anastasia Beverly Hills Prism Palette. All right, here we are, the Anastasia Prism Palette. I have not even opened the box yet. It came yesterday and I just put it on the dining room table and I didn't even look at it. I was just like, you know what? We're going to deal with that tomorrow. So this is like 100% like full on fresh first impression. It kind of flows with the theme of the modern Renaissance and the subculture palette because it has that velvet exterior on it, but it has this incredibly chic, sleek, sort of like semi-minimalist embossing to go along with the prism theme. Loving it. This is right up my alley. Like this is my aesthetic right here. So I am all about the packaging. Um, I do find that things that have like a velvet coating on them like this kind of get a little bit little fucking dirty right away. But uh, being that it's black, it might hold up a little better. The modern Renaissance being that pale pink, that shit looks so dirty right away. Um, one of my favorite palettes and I like bring it with me everywhere anyway, but it does, it looks scrubby as fuck. And here we have the inside of the palette. Um, I'm sure that you guys have seen swatches all over the internet, so I'm not going to be doing any arm swatches today. And on top of that, I don't think that they're terribly representative of how the palette works, so why waste time? Let's just jump in to how they look on the eyeballs, you know what I mean? I think for a transition, I'm going to go in with this shade Eden, which is kind of like a peachy pink. Tapping the brush in, uh, initially I do have some kickback. Uh, obviously we know that Anastasia shadows kick back a little bit, not surprising. I'm gonna pop that right into the crease and start blending out a transition with my Sigma E40 blending brush. That actually blended like butter. I'm gonna grab a slightly smaller blending brush. This is a Sigma E38. And I'm gonna pick up a little bit of this color Saturn to kind of like deepen that transition a little bit right around the outer edge. And that color also goes on like butter, blends beautifully. Next, I wanna pack one of these deep jewel tone colors over the entire lid, because I just feel like they're just in there calling to me. So I'm going to pick up this deep shimmering blue Osiris on an e.l.f. 201 brush. This is like a flat brush that has a little bit of a taper to it, so I find that it's really good for packing colors onto the lid because you kind of get a little bit of precision, but it still covers a lot of area. Okay, I don't like the way that's applying dry. But that's not a big deal because I almost always use my shimmers wet, so I'm going to wet that brush a little bit and try that again. much, much better. Okay, next I wanna blend that lid color into the crease color. So what I'm going to do is pick up a little bit more of this color Saturn and mix it with this darker brown parallel and bring that through the crease on a smaller blending brush. This is a BH number seven brush. Start in the outer portion where I would like it to be a little bit darker and then work my way into the center to make it a little bit lighter there. Um, when in doubt, always put your brush down where you want it darker first because that's where you're going to deposit the most color. Obviously, I feel like that's too obvious that you don't need to know that, but hey, whatever. Now that most of the dark shades that I'm putting on the lid is done, I'm going to conceal underneath my eyes. I put a little bit extra powder, like a touch more than I normally would, just because I want to make sure that I don't get any fallout over my face. There is a little bit of fallout with these shadows, um, it seems so far. Uh, they're very pigmented though, so that's what we should expect. Um, and then we're going to finish the rest of the funsies on the eyes. But first, a little bit of concealer. Okay, bye. Hmm, 
Okay, so now that I've concealed underneath my eyes, I'm gonna start working on the lower lash line. I'm going to dip back into that peachy, kind of salmon color, I guess, Eden. And this time I'm going to do that on a Real Techniques. I believe this is a shading brush. I don't remember what it's called and the label's rubbed off. Uh, so, but I'm just gonna drag that underneath my eyes and connect that into the outer portion from above. Next, I'm gonna darken up the outer portion of the bottom lid too. Um, but I don't think I wanna do it with Osiris because I wanna try a couple of the shades in here, but I still wanna keep it that deep jewel tone. So I think I'm gonna go over this color Throne here. Uh, this is a really interesting, like dark green, like blackened teal. But if you can see on the camera, I'm not sure how much it picks up. When you move it, it actually shifts like a purple pink shade. It's really, really cool and interesting. So I wanna use a little bit of that shade underneath the lower lash line. And I'm going to do that on the brush that came with the palette. This is the short like shader side of that brush. And again, I'm gonna wet that just because I find that these types of colors work a little bit better when they're wet. I just got a shit ton of it in my eye, but the color is stunning. I'm just gonna blend that out again with the same Real Technique shader brush with no more product on it, but it probably still has a little bit of that salmon shade. And for the inner corner, I think we're gonna make this entire thing way more interesting right now. I'm gonna highlight the inner corner with this neon ass tennis ball color sphere because it's there. It's just asking us to use it. It's like, please come here. Please use me. Ooh. <laughs> that is bright and it is pigmented. <laughs> Dude, that's dope. That color is so dope. Okay, now that that green is down, I have a picture in my head of what I want to do. Um, we are going to do like a really fun graphic winged liner with this that kind of matches that pop on the inner corner. And we're gonna start it off basically with a regular black wing. I'm gonna grab old trusty Kat Von D Tattoo Liner and Trooper. What else would I be using? Is there, can a video ever go by without me dropping all my shit on the floor? Ever? Ever one time, one video. I'd like to not drop shit on the floor for one video. Okay, so I went ahead and practiced my other eye off camera so that I could make sure I knew what the hell I was talking about when I was explaining it to you guys. So essentially what I did here is just like almost like a double wing on both sides and then kind of connected it over the top. So like very similar in idea to like a helix liner. Shout out to my friend Glow Away Meg who invented that a couple years ago, two years, was it two years ago or was it a year ago now? I don't remember, but anyway, she invented it. She's the originator, she's the shit. Uh, she does things like this all the time and I don't think that I'm doing hers any justice, but definitely very Meg-esque. I am going to draw it around my liner the way I want it to be and then I will just clean it up with black again if I need to. I'm going to be using the color Vivid Escape from the NYX Vivid Brights collection. These are great in that they are really unique and the brush tip is really great but they do crack a little bit and also it's not an exact match for the color of like the chartreuse in the center here so I'm going to apply it and then I'm going to pat over it with the color from the palette to A, even it out, and B, make it match better. As far as how we're going to apply it, you guys are just gonna have to like watch and see what I do because I don't know how to explain what I did on the other eye. Also, my mirror has to be in the frame right now. Sorry if that's not aesthetically pleasing, but that's the only way we're gonna get this done. Okay, now I'm gonna pick up a Sigma EOS 6 winged liner brush and just use that to pack a little bit of the color sphere over where I put that bright green liner down. Hopefully that'll help make it look a little bit more smooth because it does crack a little bit, like I said, and also I have wrinkly fucking eyelids. So when I use like a very matte bright shade like that, it kind of tends to and, and, and it's not cute, but we work with it. I think I'm pleased. I'm going to use the Urban Decay 24-7 Waterline Pencil in the color Walk of Shame. 
Okay, I went ahead and popped on Roller Lash from Benefit, which has been one of my recent mascara favorites. And also the Lionhearted Lashes by Cake Face Beauty and Kim Tai. Okay, so initial thoughts on the Anastasia Beverly Hills Prism Palette. Um, the colors blended beautifully so far. Uh, the colors that I used in my crease, honestly, they like blended automatically. Do you know like when you get a shade and you just put it down on a blending brush and it's just like there and it's blended? It was kind of one of those situations. It reminded me quite a bit of the Shade and Light Eye Palette from Kat Von D. Like those kind of blend themselves, if you will. I'm definitely wrong about the black holding up as far as like staying clean longer because I already have eyeshadow on the black of the palette so that that is what it is the more jewel tone shades are absolutely stunning but i do recommend using them wet like i said a thousand times in every other like first impression that i think i've ever done like i tend to use all of my shimmers wet i find them all to work better that way so uh, that's pretty much par for the course once i put them on wet though holy jesus like holy jewel tones batman like they're so beautiful and that color sphere, that bright, bright chartreuse, 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 that bright chartreuse green, just, just a ball of pigment that just blended over that jewel tone and into it just mm, perfectly. I really, really like that. Another major positive for this palette is that while it has all of these interesting colors, the brights, the jewel tones, whatever, it also has everything that you might need to create like a normal look. So even if you want to use something like this, something like this, something like this, like I did, uh, if you want to ground that with like colors that you can like blend it out with, darken it up with, all of that is available in this palette too. It has multiple transition shades. It has a black, it has a dark brown. It has like a bone color shade that you can kind of blend things down with if you need to. This I could pop in a suitcase and know that I have a bunch of looks available to me without having to bring anything else. That's not a standard that everyone holds a palette to, but it's definitely a standard that I personally hold a palette to. And if you do anything where you bring your makeup places, Especially if you're a working makeup artist, you will appreciate those types of things because yeah, you're probably going to bring a billion anyway, but it is nice to have all of the things you need to make a lot of interesting looks plus the basics in one palette and know that they're all good quality. So when I review a palette, I think the way I'm going to do it from now on, and I mentioned this in my last tutorial and I am still trying it this way in case you're wondering, um, when I get a new palette, I'm going to do a first impressions video and then I'm going to try to do the majority of my looks for that week with the palette and then do a full review after. So this is just the first impression. This is the first look that I did with it. I haven't touched it beside this. Now going forward, I'm going to try pretty much all the colors for the rest of the week, do whatever I see fit with them and do like my normal makeup looks mostly using this palette and then when I have like a real full picture of how it works then next week we'll do the full review. As it stands right now this palette is super legit. Um, I love the color choices. I think that they have a lot of balls putting that green in there and I am really glad they did because it kind of pushed me out of my comfort zone a little bit and it looks super good. Everything blended well. Uh, everything was pigmented the way you would expect it to be. Like I said, shimmers work better wet. Uh, just something to keep in mind if you don't like doing that. And uh, it's definitely very versatile. So uh, I'm going to keep on using it for the rest of the week and let you guys know what I think later. But as of right now, it gets a thumbs up. And now to finish this look off, we need some lips. For the lips, I want to do something that is not going to take away from the eyes because there's a lot going on here. Uh, but I also don't want it to be like a full-on nude because I just don't really like the way I look with a crazy eye and a full-on nude. So I'm going to use one of the colors that has been kind of one of my go-to daily shades recently. This is the Dose of Colors Liquid Lipstick in the color Plum Queen. And this is the finished look. So that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Um, so far, this palette is dope. Uh, I'm going to use it more and then I'm going to give you the nitty gritty. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe so you don't miss that, obviously. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it because that really helps me out. It helps other people see my videos. It helps me know that you guys are enjoying my content. It helps me keep going. It helps me keep the wheels turning over here.
Leave me a comment down below and let me know what kind of the look you'd like to see when I do the update on this palette because I will give a full review but I'll also probably do another look along with that too. And maybe, just maybe, that'll be the look I do in next week's video. And don't forget to follow me on social media because uh, that's how we're going to stay in touch between videos. I mean, if I put out two or three videos a week, there are still four other days that we're not keeping in touch if you're not following me on social media. I am at Miss Quinface across the board. If there's anywhere that you want to find me, I am always at Miss Quinface, specifically Instagram and Twitter. I'm all over those all day, every day. That's all I've got for today. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this look as much as I did because it was really fun to create and I will see your butt in the next one.